400,000 feet above the Earth's surface, the Space Shuttle Columbia re-enters the atmosphere. Within moments, it'll be an erupting fireball. All seven astronauts will be dead. The technicians struggle to interpret the data coming in from the shuttle's hydraulics. Right on schedule, the shuttle executes a computer-controlled roll to the right. The maneuver is designed to try to find some lift, which will help slow the shuttle down even more and cool her superheated outer skin. The shuttle is now heading towards Earth at a speed of 17,000 kilometers per hour. The crew on board Columbia are still totally unaware that there is any problem. They cannot see the disintegrating wing. At 9 a.m., the Space Shuttle Columbia disintegrates. The flagship of the fleet, a screaming fireball over the desert. Now it's up to investigators to determine what went wrong and who is to blame. The catastrophe that has resulted in a deadly fireball over Texas is one of NASA's worst failures. Hours after the disaster, NASA calls upon a retired Navy Admiral with no axe to grind to conduct an inquiry. The investigation centers around the issue of the foam hit. Could mere foam have caused such a devastating breach? After five months of debate and speculation, they rig up a test. It was clear that the speed of the hit had transformed the lightweight foam into a deadly missile. There was now no doubt what caused the tragedy. Three top managers were removed from the shuttle program. But could anything have been done to save the lives of the seven astronauts aboard Columbia? There was no onboard toolkit, so a repair would have been impossible. Scientist G. Scott Hubbard thinks a rescue could have been attempted. Since the Columbia disaster, astronauts do mandatory spacewalks to inspect the shuttle's hull for damage, as well as a video inspection. If they find damage, there is now a toolbox aboard to fix basic problems. For the seven aboard the Columbia on the 1st of February 2003, these reforms came too late. 